I am so glad you're here. Today, we're going to be learning about electrophilic aromatic substitutions, a fundamental reaction class that lies at the heart of aromatic chemistry. At the core of electrophilic aromatic substitution is the aromatic benzene ring, known for its stability and unique reactivity. Electrophilic aromatic substitution is a substitution reaction in which an aromatic carbon-hydrogen bond is replaced by an electrophile and the aromatic ring is preserved. These reactions include halogenation, sulfonation, nitration, Friedel-Crafts alkylation, and Friedel-Crafts acylation. Let's delve into the general mechanism of electrophilic aromatic substitution, where a carbon-hydrogen bond is replaced by an electrophile often aided with the presence of a Lewis acid. For many of these reactions, the first step in this pathway to electrophilic aromatic substitution is going to be activation of the electrophile using a Lewis acid. Consider the case of doing a bromination, where you're using a bromine diatomic molecule, where the electronegativity differences are zero between the two atoms since they are the same atom. Therefore, we would not expect this molecule to act as an electrophile. However, if in the presence of something like iron tribromide, the iron atom in this molecule is a Lewis acid, and it can accept electrons from a Lewis base containing lone pairs. Therefore, if these lone pairs are to attack the Lewis acid electrophile and iron tribromide, this can generate an intermediate wherein the iron tribromide becomes effectively negatively charged and the bromine species becomes effectively positively charged. Because of this, remember that these electrons in these pi orbitals can act as electron donors. In other words, the benzene ring can actually act as a nucleophile, and these electrons can be used to attack the bromine, kicking off the electrons and leaving behind an intermediate wherein you have generated an arene carbocation. So in this case, the bromine atom is now on the carbon, leaving behind a par partially positive charge at one of these carbons. And be due to resonance, this positive carbocation can actually be stabilized. So recall that due to the delocalization of these conjugated dienes, these electrons can shift. And in fact, when they do so, they generate a new resonance structure indicating a stabilization of the carbocation that has been formed. So this moves the carbocation to a new position, and since the carbocation can exist at multiple positions, this is a stabilizing feature and kind of a driving force for this reaction. Now that we see that this arene carbocation can be stabilized through resonance stabilization, by moving these pi electrons at various location to generate these three different resonance structures, this is a st relatively stable intermediate. And recall that our activated Lewis acid is still present, wherein we have a bromine attached to the Lewis acid left behind, and this can now act as a nucleophile towards one of the hydrogen atoms on our six-membered ring. So therefore, if this were to come down and deprotonate at any of the, at either of these, what would happen is that this would then kick down our electrons back into the conjugated pi system. And this would produce our product, which would be halogenation, specifically bromination, via a electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism. In sulfonation, a sulfonic group, or SO3H, is introduced onto an aromatic ring via electrophilic aromatic substitution. Sulfonation begins with the generation of an electrophile, a species hungry for electrons. In this case, our electrophile is a sulfur trioxide molecule which is present in fuming sulfuric acid. As the sulfur trioxide molecule approaches the benzene ring, it forms a sigma complex where the pi electrons of the benzene ring attack the electrophile, resulting in the formation of a positively charged intermediate.
Next, a proton transfer occurs, regenerating the aromaticity of the benzene ring and yielding the final sulfonated product. Now let's take a look at the activation step for both chlorination and nitration. Similar to the example with bromination, the first step for chlorination is activation via this Lewis acid, where the chlorine molecule at one end is attracted to and attacks the Lewis acid aluminum trichloride. And when doing so, again, this generates a very similar species to the previous example that you saw, where you have a newly activated species, where you have a partially positive at the chlorine, and you still have your trichloride attached to the aluminum. And therefore, this can now act as an electrophile and interact with benzene. Similarly, for nitration, the first step also requires an activation where you have an electron pair that attacks a proton from nitric acid to sulfuric acid, kicking off these electrons and generating an intermediate species where now we have generated a compound that can further react because now this portion of the molecule is positively charged and then can act as a good leaving group. And if it were to do so, this would release water, of course, but then also be left with this nitronium ion, which is going to be an incredibly activated species at the nitrogen position. And now this is our electrophile which, with which we can add to benzene. The method of nitration can be used to install a nitro group on an aromatic ring. Once on the ring, the nitro group can be further reduced to give an amino group. Upon treatment with a metal, either iron or zinc, and hydrochloric acid, the nitro group is reduced. This process provides us with a general method for installing an amino group on a benzene ring. Now let's talk about Friedel-Craft alkylation a useful method for forming a new carbon-carbon bond at benzene. If we are to follow the same principles as previously when discussing the mechanisms, then you should understand that the first step should be activation of this alkyl chloride with aluminum trichloride. And just like it behaved previously, the first step is that activation step where we are producing an activated species by attacking from the chlorine to the aluminum. And this generates an activated intermediate where now we have a great leaving group in the chlorine position. So these electrons can kick off to the chlorine now that it is positively charged thus generating an active carbocation. So this generates this carbocation, and this is the perfect opportunity for these pi electrons to act as a nucleophile for this activated carbocation. And when doing so, this allows us to form that arene ion, where now we have a situation where the new portion, the new alkyl group, has been added to this arene ion. And again, remember, there, there are three different resonance structures for these, and I'm only depicting one here. And don't forget, we still have plenty of this compound left over, which can then take one of these protons. So for example, if this activated species came back, then it could deprotonate this proton kicking off the electrons and regenerating our aromatic compound. And this would give us our final product. Finally, let's talk about Friedel-Craft acylation. Notice that the product form in acylation leaves behind this carbonyl group. So an acyl group is not to be confused with an alkyl group. Although the mechanism for Friedel-Craft acylation follows the exact same pathway. Again, the very first step is going to be the activation using the Lewis acid aluminum trichloride where you get attack to the aluminum center generating that active species where the chlorine is now 
positively charged, the aluminum is negatively charged, and now we have our species which can act as a nucleophile. So first this would kick off, this would generate a stabilized carbocation, and now we have our electrophile which can add to the benzene ring. And again from there you would follow the same process, producing the arene carbocation three resonance structures that are stabilizing, followed by deprotonation from this left behind species that can act as a nucleophile for the proton and regenerating your aromatic compound that now has a new acyl group attached to it. Now let's try some practice problems. On the screen you'll see a set of problems and I want you to pause this video and try them independently. Then once you've come up with an answer, resume the video and I'll walk you through the explanation. When evaluating these two different reactions, it's important to understand the mechanism and understand aromaticity. Consider the fact that in the very first reaction, we would have addition of chlorine to a benzene ring. Notice that the benzene ring satisfies all the rules to be an aromatic compound. It contains 4n plus 2 pi electrons. It's a fully cyclic system. All the electrons are fully conjugated. And notice that on the right-hand side, on this product, if it were to be formed, you would be de-aromatizing this molecule. For that reason, you're left behind with just a simple diene, and thus this is not an aromatic compound. Therefore, the energy required to make this happen would be incredibly unfavorable, and for that reason, unlike with normal alkenes, you do not get addition of chlorine to the benzene ring. Now consider the next step, which is an example where you have a Lewis acid, which can help drive this reaction forward. Recall that the first step in this mechanism is going to be activation of the Lewis acid from the bromine molecule, which will attach to make an intermediate that is now an activated species. So we have generated a new incredibly reactive compound. Sorry, this is iron. This, this is iron, by the way. And now what can happen is these pi electrons can attack this bromine, kicking off our species, leaving behind an intermediate where we have generated an arene ion. And this is actually called, a, some people call it a sigma complex, okay? So this has generated a new carbocation species. And remember that it is resonance stabilized, so if you remove these electrons down, then we could generate a different resonance structure where the carbocation has been moved. Additionally, we could have moved these electrons down instead to generate that third resonance stabilized carbocation and for this reason due to the resonance stabilization this allows this process to occur and then what we're left with is an opportunity where one of the hydrogen atoms that remains can be deprotonated because it is attached to this activated Lewis acid so these electrons can deprotonate kick off down to reform that pi bond and generate our final product. This next question is a little bit tricky. You may have predicted that this is a friedel craft alkylation, where you might use a alkyl chloride in addition to the aluminum chloride Lewis acid to produce this species. However, let's talk for a moment about the activated Lewis acid that would be formed. So we would have our alkyl chloride which has enough lone pairs to attack the aluminum chloride, generating an active species. So if this were the case, then we would have an intermediate that looks similar to this. Now importantly, on this carbon is a hydrogen atom. And rather than these electrons just kicking off, what is possible is that you would get a hydride shift to produce your final carbocation, which would place the carbocation at the secondary position. And this is actually a more favorable carbocation because if you recall from previous chemistry courses, you would have learned that secondary 
carbocations are more stable than what might happen if this process didn't occur. So if instead this leaving group just popped off because we have generated our activated species, then what would happen is you would actually generate this primary carbocation, which again is far less stable. So this hydride shift mechanism is going to produce an intermediate that is not going to attach at the terminal carbon position, which is what we desire in our reaction. Instead, what we can do is a friedel craft acylation wherein we are attaching an acyl group which would produce the desired product because now we wouldn't have that same hydride shift. So this would produce a product that looks like this. Now importantly, this is not the final product that we desire. However, if you recall from previous chemistry courses, there are a set of conditions that allow you to effectively eliminate this double bond to the oxygen or in other words, reduce this acyl group into an alkyl group. And if you remember those uh, reaction conditions, you would know that for the way to do this would actually be to use zinc with mercury and hydrochloric acid with heat, which I'll write as a delta symbol, and this allows you to reduce that compound. So notice that the pathway to get here is a two-step pathway, using friedel craft acylation followed by the reduction of the acyl group to an alkyl group. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. In addition, I'd love it if you subscribe to this channel to learn more about chemistry. Additionally, if you have any questions, please drop them below in the comment section, and I'd be happy to respond and help you out a little more.